have Mickey Spagnola, DallasCowboys.com, a little bit later in the hour at 4.30. Craig's off the radar at 445. And Paul's top five at 555. Joined by Max Olson, national writer, college football writer for the Athletic.com on Sikkim 365 Radio. Max, the, uh, the first standings came out, and of course, there's all sorts of uh, controversy and conspiracies and whatever else. And then there's some that just don't care about it because it, it is kind of a, a week-to-week thing that they make up along the way, it seems like, in some cases. What are your thoughts about week one? Yeah, I mean, I think on the Big 12 side, there's, I don't think there's a whole lot to worry about here, really. I mean, I think that <clears throat> you look at the position that Oklahoma, Baylor, and Oklahoma State are in, uh, at least they have opportunities in front of them. They've got some really big games uh, still left to be played here um, that, that you know, can, can put you in position. Whereas I think if you look at the ACC, Pac-12, and AAC, I think some of the, the, the you know, rankings from this, this first go of it, um, you know, would suggest that they're not going to have that many chances to play top 25 teams the rest of the way. Whereas, you know, certainly Baylor's going to get plenty. And if you get to the Big 12 title game, I think that's probably – you know, probably going to still be a top 15 matchup. So uh, I don't think there's too much to worry about from the, from the big 12 side. And of course, as you'd expect, uh, you know, a lot of, a lot of fascination with the Cincinnati spot and uh, you know, just the lack of respect or perceived lack of respect for, uh, for the Americans. Max, go ahead. Max, uh, on Cincinnati in particular, I mean, what what do you kind of say if you're them or think if you're them? Let's just get to the Big 12 as soon as possible because uh, looking at – we just had Chad Brindle cover Cincinnati on, and, I mean, they're unbeaten, but, you know, even with SMU's ranking now, that game here in a couple weeks doesn't have the same kind of uh, oomph to it that it, that it once did maybe, uh, you know, even a week ago. So, I mean, if they went out, do they just – you know, have to hope for a prayer at this point, or do you think that would you'd probably still be enough to, to maybe find a way into this thing? I mean, I, I don't think it's that bad because we, we, we are seeing enough upsets and, and top 25 losses each week that I think there is a chance that SMU and Houston are going to be able to move into that top 25 here at some point. So I think that can help Cincinnati. But the, the big thing, like Cincinnati's whole pitch on getting the playoffs is not like weekly dominance. They haven't been doing that. The pitch is going 13-0 and having that win over Notre Dame. And, and that win over Notre Dame is, is going to keep looking better week after week. If you look at their schedule, I you know other than maybe like Virginia, I don't see a game left on their schedule that challenges them. I think they're going to go 11-1. and one, And they're already number 10 right now, I believe. So, but the, you know, as long as Notre Dame keeps rolling and is the New Year's Six team and all that, I, I, I still think that's a pretty compelling part of the Cincinnati resume that um, is is hard to knock, and I mean, you look at the other teams. Like that's a better win than Alabama has at this point. Yep. Max also with us, theAthletic dot com on Second Three Sixty Five Radio Three Sixty Five Sports. Gary Patterson, after an incredible run at TCU, although he was at practice a little bit this week as TCU gets ready for Baylor on Saturday in Fort Worth, out after twenty one years. Your thoughts about that story? Yeah, pretty pretty shocking. I mean, as you guys know, can you imagine Gary Patterson not coaching the Baylor game? Yeah. No, no. He's trying to <laughs> now, though. He's doing everything he can but coach it. But he's he's in the middle of it. I. I yeah, yeah, yeah. That's you know, it's it's uh, you know, I know how much that one has always meant to him. But like, yeah, it, it you know, certainly shocking to have that come out um, on on Halloween night. There certainly, like I, you know, you started hearing things last week. You know, not long after Texas Tech opened up, that TCU was potentially going to be, um, you know, getting ready for a coaching search as well. But I, I honestly, at the time when I heard it, I didn't really totally believe it because it's Gary Patterson. He's a legend there. He figured, man, maybe there's a way he can, you know, get to six wins and, uh, you know, buy more time and all that. But, uh, you know, clearly they were, you know, the, this, this run they've had in Big 12 play has, has not been nearly good enough. And I really thought that TCU team had a chance to, you know, contend for a big 12 title this year. So you, you combine a disappointing year with, you know, three pretty mediocre seasons, uh, you know, preceded it. And you, you see why they're making the change, but man, it's, it's hard to picture somebody else on the sideline, whether it's Jer- Jerry Hill or whoever's doing it next year. Uh, it's hard to picture somebody that's not Gary Patterson running that program. Uh, you know, what a legend, uh, he was for, uh, you know, really, li- you know, literally taking them to, you know, impossible new heights. At that program, and and uh, you know, it's 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 a bummer that it's such a bitter ending there in some ways. And uh, hopefully, people can move past that and 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 get back to honoring the guy here. Uh, you know, in the not too distant future. 
So another, you know, now opening in the, that coaching carousel, Max, uh, who do you think probably announces a coach first, uh, Texas Tech or TCU? Um, I think that, uh, I think Jeff Trailer staying at UTSA means that Texas Tech probably has to have like a, a, a maybe a fuller coaching search now. Mm-hmm. And so, I mean, I could see, I could see Texas Tech getting it done sooner, but I, I don't know the, the, even the reports that last night out of, of you know, folks that cover TCU that, you know, they're looking at Jay Norvell and Deion Sanders and, and Tony Elliott, and Kellen Moore. I, it's hard for me to tell, like, is that a little bit of a smoke screen because they think they've got Sonny Dykes locked up? Or is that, <laughs> is that suggest that Sonny Dykes isn't coming and they, they this person can go in all sorts of different directions. It's hard to know what to make of, uh, of that. But, uh, you know, certainly I, I think if SMU is not playing in the conference title game this year, then, uh, that probably makes it a little bit easier to get that wrapped up at the end of November if you're TCU, if that's the hire. But uh, certainly, I, I know it's very early on here for TCU. That's kind of a that's kind of a gumbo of names in that that you just mentioned. You know, from Kellen Moore, who's had a a great run of late with the Cowboys, to Deion Sanders, who's been a head coach for a year and a half, to uh, Elliott, of course, one of the best coordinators in, in college football. I mean, it's good that they're kind of if, in fact, any of that is even true. That it's kind of in Correct. different angles. It's not just like one, like, let's go through a it's retread. Not just a trailer. Yeah. Or, yeah. 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 yeah well, it's, it's funny that, um, you know, uh, uh, Jeremiah Donati said this week that, uh, you know, he thought it probably would be hard to hire a defensive minded head coach at TCU just because you have so much to live up to, um, you know, in, in following Gary Patterson. So I, I, I am curious kind of what direction that search takes. I'm not sure Dion is an offensive or defensive coach. He's not really coached long enough to have, you know, be proven it either. And I, I don't quite get that one. I believe he's in the hospital right now too. and has been for a few weeks. So I, I, don't, I don't know how, how seriously to take that one, to be honest. But uh, clearly, you know, if, if they're focusing in on, uh, on offensive names, um, you could see lots of uh, really interesting ones linked to that job. Max Olson, the athletic.com with us and, First week of the college football rankings out, co- coaching changes as well. You know, Baylor uh, took care of business against Texas. It wasn't easy. They had to come from 11 down, but they methodically just kept going throughout the second half and eventually controlled that game the last uh, quarter and a half. Your thoughts about Baylor and, of course, TCU this weekend? And, and he, we're an upset away uh, to avoid an upset away from having a hell of a matchup between Oklahoma and Baylor for the second time in three years. Yeah, absolutely, and uh, you know, I, I, man, and what if it's a, as, if it's as, as dramatic as the last one in Waco? My, mm. my goodness, uh, we better bring the heart medication and everything. Like it, it's, uh, you know, you, you said it. I mean, just really impressive second half performance I thought from Baylor, um, and and there was, I, I felt like through that fourth quarter there was really no doubt that, that Baylor was going to win that game, and even the the fake punt by Texas that was so bad. Um, and, and, and kill their chance in some way. That you, you could see there's kind of that desperation from Texas that they do, um, that they were kind of, you know, running out of gas here against Baylor. And, and you, you're seeing a lot of that, you know, predictably in, for year one at Texas, you're, you're kind of seeing that reckoning now of like, oh man, is that Tom Herman's fault or is that Steve Sarkeesian's <laughs> fault or what, you know, what are we supposed to make of this? And of, of course that's happening in year one at Texas. It's, it's happened to the last two coaches, not surprising, but just continue to be impressed by, by how tough. Uh, this Baylor team plays and, and just, man, how, you know, um, how well coached they, they've been this year. I mean, I've just been so impressed by, um, you know, the, uh, you, you, you know, you, you think back to watching that team last year versus this year, it's just completely different. Max, what do you think of uh, Auburn and A&M in SEC action? Yeah, I think this one timed up pretty well for A&M. Uh, you know, they're, they're coming off the bye week there. I think they're coming back fresh from this one. Uh, plenty of time to prepare for that stretch run. And, uh, Whereas Auburn's been playing uh, really a, just a, a hell of a schedule lately and, uh, you know, playing a bunch of ranked teams in a row, and here's another one. So I, I like the way this sort of times up here for A&M. And, uh, you know, certainly I, the thing that we're going to be asking about A&M, I think probably every week going forward, especially after the way they played against Alabama, is just, you know, what are we going to get from Calzada? Is, is, is he going to play like we've seen him capable of playing before? And, and if so, um, then they can run the ball on first, second down. Uh, I, I think that uh, A&M's got a chance to go on a nice little run here, but this is a big one, and Brian Harson's been pretty impressive in how he's he's taken over this Auburn program and, and uh, in, a, in a super competitive year in that division. 
and uh, and figured out a way to play well with the players he inherited. Max, I'm I uh, I'm starting to kind of dig deeper into the Heisman Trophy candidates. We saw what Kenneth Walker the third's done. We know about Corral at Mississippi or Bryce Young at Alabama or whoever. Yep. Um, can Caleb Williams be a, I mean, is he, is he making enough inroads in just enough time with what they have left with Baylor, Oklahoma state, possible big 12 title game to get into this discussion with only a few starts? I, I think so. I mean, I, I think it's possible. And I, and I, I, you know, that's sort of setting aside the debate of, you know, how many games do you have to play in a season to be a Heisman, mm-hmm. you know, finalist or whatever, which, you know, I, I people can have their own kind of interpretation on that. Clearly, he's been one of the most impactful guys on this college football season so far since he got plugged in against Texas. But part of it's just the rest of the field. I mean, you're right. You know, Kenneth Walker uh, had had an, an amazing game against Michigan and, and deserves all the, all the praise this week as the guy that, you know, should be at the top of the list here. But um, you know, Bryce Young, I think, has been pretty good. I think he's probably being a little bit overrated, but I think he's been good this year. Uh, Matt Corral's been really prolific, but, you know, is Ole Miss going to stay in the top 25 and, and be really relevant? I, I don't know. I could see a guy like C.J. Stroud from Ohio State who's putting up great numbers um, and has, has really bounced back since the Oregon game. I could see him getting in it. But, yeah, I mean, who else are we really talking about here? I mean, it's, you know, I, it's fun to see, like, you know, Jordan Davis from, Georgia get talked about and stuff like that. But yeah, I mean, this has always usually been a, a quarterback award. And, and I think as long as Caleb Williams keeps, um, you know, playing like he did in October, then yeah, I would think that uh, people should take him seriously. Thanks, Max. Appreciate it. Are we not going to go uh, the big game of the week, Ohio State, Nebraska here? We're not going to preview that one? Smokey, I'm, I'm going to it. You want me to send you pictures and send you, send you videos of sad people and all that? Or, can people. you do Can you do yeah. what do you, what do you want? Yeah, send the picture of the video of the balloons flying because they may not get in the air because that means they <laughs> scored. And number two, can you just send me pictures of old great memories of Nebraska football from 20 years ago? Tommy <laughs> Fraser, Jeff. You know, you got a choice on, at 11 o'clock. You can, you can turn on TV and watch them you know, get blown up a half say, or you can just go on YouTube and, and just watch the, the heydays. I, I think you should do that. I'm going to go back and watch the 95 Nebraska team and be good with it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, there you go. Thanks. You you Max. Thank you. Uh, I almost brought Steve Sippel on the show. He's a columnist. He writes for the Lincoln star journal, whatever about this, this is it's over, right? This is it. It's, it's, I mean, I don't know if people have been saying that for like, it feels like six weeks now. Yeah. Or even know, I mean, six years, but it's been four. I, I think, I think Trev Alberts has a really, really tough decision to make because it is a legend that he's firing as a player. Gary Patterson is out at TCU and he actually did something. Yeah. But, but I don't think, like, I don't know if people really. I think people like Gary Patterson. I don't know if they love Gary Patterson. I don't think they like Scott Frost anymore. He's got kind of a him. cult following in there yeah. among the Froggers. I yeah. mean, he does. Well, yeah. I mean, they, they don't. They, a cult following, it's not big enough to, to get butts in seats. No. No. That's some. Yeah, right. it's a very small cult. And yeah, I mean, at this point. You know, there's a lot of coaches that seem to have that that crowd that never leaves, no matter what. Uh, you could, you know, you could burn down a building and be like, "Well, the match company created the mat." You know, like yeah. it would never ever be that person's the fault. Build, the, yeah, the walls exactly. were built with the wrong material. Um, but but yeah, you know, that's a that that's a game that's going to be tough. And oh. uh, you know, yeah, he's a player, but you also fully acknowledge when you hired him that there was an opportunity you'd have to fire him. So that's, you know, that was the risk that you ran when you hired him to begin with. You knew that it could end this way. You never imagined it would, but you knew it could. And, and here we are. And, you know, it's still not over yet, but it does feel like we're getting closer to the end. You know, I, so let me ask you this. If they do fire him, how quickly does somebody pick him up? Scott Frost as an assistant, a probably no, as a head like, coach. Did he get a oh, job as a head coach somewhere else pretty quickly or not? I mean, he'd have to go down a level for yeah, sure. Yeah, he's not getting a, a but comparable, not a, a power five job. Well, I know, but that is a lower power five. Job. Yeah, but I mean, no, I mean, look, not. if you were Texas State, would you hire Scott Frost? Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, absolutely. I, yeah, but he's going to get a he's got a sixteen or twenty million dollar base. All right, um, that's Max Holst. They just they suck. Well, see, that's why Texas State can hire him because you can hire him for. Seven hundred fifty thousand dollars for the first four yeah, years, yeah, and then the buyout covers the rest. Yeah, you know, I, I was looking at that coach's hot seat thing, and I noticed some. They put Steve Sarkeesian on there, which I think is yeah. ridiculous. Like yeah, that's just is. so stupid. Yeah, like I mean, like that could be a fun site that actually, you know, if if they didn't put stuff like that, th- that would make it 
so much more authentic and genuine because Cesar Arkeesian is in absolutely no way, shape, or form in any threat to be fired by Texas within the, within the next like 14 months. I mean, absolutely no way, unless barring a scandal, there's no way he's getting fired anytime soon. So I think that's just kind of silly. But for Frost, it's obviously all legit. And I'll tell you, um, I don't want to see him go anywhere. I think Dave Aranda would make it one hell of a coach in Nebraska. Like that's the kind of dude. That they, yeah. That's the kind of dude. I think yeah. he, he, someone like him uh, would, you know, would be good. You don't, you don't need the name. You don't need the this or that. Just get a football coach in there that'll block out all the BS, get down to business, stop relishing the glory days that are now 25 years ago at this point, or no, more 20 years ago at this point. And, and get back to business, that's, man. That's why they maybe need what to What did I say to you earlier today when you asked me? And I, I, I it seems like Ball. every day we go down. Craig Bowl is at Wyoming. Okay. Yeah. It's not a hot name. It's not a big name, but he and went to North Dakota and State. In the 60s, yeah. and, and, and But he knows the skeletons inside. He knows how that used to work. And you would think Scott Frost. Here's the problem I have with Scott Frost there is so much, so many game day meltdown decisions from the coaching staff across the board and he is a part of that going like a, a one yard run when it was fourth down they thought it was third down it's, it's stupid it's stupid football all right when we the, come the back the fake punt on fourth and lo- oh wait that wasn't him that was Sarkeesian last week <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> I was, that was uh, punt, like that setting was, up a punt Paul, return that was Paul Assassin's boyfriend yeah. Yeah. Michigan and Michigan State are both still in the Michigan kind of got obviously slipped both of them had late game gifts to beat Nebraska. So I'm not taking either one of them seriously. That's both of them did had to have late game, throw up on yourself moments by Nebraska to beat them. I'm sure. I'm sure Ohio state will beat them both. Yeah, you would think so. All right. uh, When we come back,